What's up, everyone? Welcome to my channel on this lovely, I think it's June 19th day. It's beautiful weather here in Tennessee, and uh, let's get into it. How do you get freaking shredded, right? Shredded on a ketogenic diet? Well, you have to adapt, right? A lot of people don't understand this concept because they went from the world of keto and then there was all these keto junk products and all this foolery with beta hydroxybutyrate salts and it like got too popular and then it crashed and burned because people start feeling sick on it because people are having electrolyte issues and constipation and lethargy and the hair is falling out all on keto. So then they ran over to carnivore and did the same thing. Except right now in carnivore, there's not as many horrible products, right? Because it, thank God, it's supposed to be an all meat based diet and protein and animal fat. Now the whole point is you're not, you're not supposed to be eating tons of protein, right? I've gone through tons of videos on why eating too much protein is an issue for people who've got an iron overload, people who've got issue with uric acid, which is a protein byproduct, waste products of protein. If you have a low GFR because you're dehydrated, all of these things are happening on carnivore. Then people are eating too much protein. And guess what? They are not eating enough fat. So if you don't eat enough fat, then you can't get into ketosis. Then your body has to take that excess protein converted into glucose to give you energy, but it only gives you energy from the liver and the blood, but not the muscles. So in the beginning, you feel good, just like vegan diets. And then after a while, you start feeling like crap. Yes. Plus meat does not have enough potassium in it. Sorry, it just doesn't. Your ribeye is not going to help your electrolytes. And that's a whole nother cluster fluck of videos I've done 20,000 times. But today I want to talk about exercise. Get my phone out of the camera. Uh, I want to talk about exercise and the importance of it when you're trying to get shredded on a ketogenic diet. And keto just, it's keto, omnivore, and carnivore because both, both diets, you need to be in ketosis or else you're going to jack up your hormones. Now, all these people telling you only need to meet eat meat and salt, they're not telling you the truth. Okay. People telling you that then, then you got people saying that you need to eat and eat meat and fruit. You see the contrast of bullshit between different people telling you different things. One, they're saying, Oh my God, just get everything from like meat and salt and just eat a ton of meat until you're satisfied. Right. Who cares if you got kidney issues and dehydration issues and electrolyte issues, who cares? You know, if you got histamine issue, the quality of the meat, just eat tons of it, eat some hot dogs. Anyway, and then you got the other people are like, oh my God, you can't do carnivore for the long term. So you got to do carnivore and a bunch of fruit, a bunch of genetically modified Frankenstein fruit, right? Because now you're never going to be in ketosis with that. And then you're not going to get stored glycogen with fruit. And then if you've got a fructose issue or a liver issue, now your liver has to bog down all this damn fruit you're eating. You might as well be vegan again. I'm just kidding. Now, let's get more into it. The best is to have a well-formulated ketogenic diet. You don't want to, you want to, you have issues with plants. You've got, you have issues with salicylates and oxalates and gorgias and nightshades, lectins, lectins, opponents, tannins, gluten, right? You have leaky gut histamine. You got a, you got some beriberi. You got some thiamine issues. Okay. One step. You got MTHFR one step at a time ride the line of carnivore until you can get that prebiotic fiber back because fiber in the gut always helps you regulate not only does it help with uh if you take like kefir or whatever with having the probiotics uh, the bacteria attached to the prebiotic fiber but it also helps balance the existing fiber you have i mean rather balance the existing bacteria that you have in your gut. Okay. So that is the reason why and helps the production with that balance of bacteria of diamine oxidase. So when you're just having meat and meat and meat, your diamine oxidase begins to lower and then people start to develop histamine to foods that they never had before. They did carnivore for too long. So ride the line, ride the line, add an avocado in, at least cruciferous brassica family uh, fiber in a cooked form, just a little bit. 
right? Every other day, one time a day, seven avocado. Okay. Now, if you can tolerate them, I know a lot of you have issues with latex gloves. A lot of people don't realize if you can't put latex gloves on without having itchy, itchy, you probably can't eat an avocado. Okay, I'm from the same family of tree, but let's get into it. How you get shredded is balancing your blood sugar. And this is important getting into ketosis, get into ketosis, balancing your blood sugar. So I've done, and I'll do more videos because you guys need to be reminded of what your blood sugar needs to look like in a 24 hour day. I can't speak 24 hour day of trying to be in ketosis while taking out all the carbs and starch and all of this st stuff, right? By eating high fat, moderate to low protein and getting your electrolytes balanced. One of the best ways is through exercise. Glute four receptor sites all over your body, your skeletal muscle. So important. People ask me what's the best type of exercise. I'm like resistance training. Not yoga, not HIIT training, not friggin' um, like cycling or running or any of that. Resistance training. The reason why that is, is because you're having actin and myosin, right? These are filaments, and they grind against each other within the muscle cell. When you do yoga to static position, you don't do this. There's no grinding. It looks weird, but they don't, gr you're not grinding. That grinding is what creates a blister, which then creates the cell to expand. And that's your muscle. Then inside the muscle cell, you have the mitochondria, which becomes like popcorn. So there's different methods and different ways to uptake glucose, right? Mitochondria and glute four receptors from glute four receptor sites. So glute four receptors are like hands. They call them, some people say doors, hands, catcher's mitts. And if this is a cell, they're going to pop out and sit at the surface of that cell. And here comes the glucose from too much protein or too much glucose from stress. Yes, you can make sugar in your body from stress and um, or from having sugar itself. And the body's going to go, it, the sugar's going to go to the, the cell's going to go boom. It's going to go into the cell. Right, so it's going to go into the catcher's mitt, which is going to allow it to go into the cell to be used as energy rather than because if it's not going in your GLUT4 receptors, it's going to be stored as fat. That's what's going to happen to your blood sugar, or it's going to remain really, really, really high doing a thing called advanced glycation end product, which is oxidizing you and making you old and unhealthy and damaging, damaging diabetes, heart disease. Name the gamut of things that, that are problematic to your body when you have too high blood sugar day in and day out from processed foods or from stress or from lack of sleep or from alcohol or from whatever. Because even when your body's just annoyed and allergies are irritated and your inflammatory markers are high, so is your blood sugar. Pretty crazy. So working out. That helps you develop those GLUT4 receptors that will uptake glucose. And this is why the reason, one of the main reasons why I, at 50, freaking five, okay, 55, going on 56, have been able to stay lean because I work out six days a week. I don't care if it's for five minutes or for three hours. I'm work out six days a week. And when I'm not working out six days a week, I'm working with this little dude right there, who's standing right next to me. He's got like, he's got separation anxiety. When I'm inside working on my computer, he is like, what, three and a half feet from me, through this wall. I'm like, will you stop it and go be a horse? And the other was the the others won't leave him. It's like to go venture on the ten acres and on my mountain and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I actually I'm gonna go to the gym very soon. I'm in my workout clothes. 
I'm going to go to the gym very soon. And then you will have to be a horse. So working out and learning how to work out properly and learning how to, to breathe properly and contract your muscle properly and learn how to, a lot of people lift too heavy and they use all their levers, right? They use all the joints instead of using the muscle. You're not going to develop these glute four receptors sites very well if you're swinging weight because it's so heavy. I can't stand, like when guys are like, I need a spot. If you need a spot, it's too heavy. That's where damaging and injuring yourself comes into play. One of the main ways a lot of guys damage their back is they're doing deadlifts too heavy. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Chest press, too heavy. Then they hurt their shoulder or their, their bicep. It's very, very, very important that you guys learn how to work out properly so you can develop these glute 4 receptors so you can uptake this glucose instead of storing the glucose as fat. And when you build muscle, they're like little freaking endocrine producers of testosterone. That is the reason why I, at 55, going on 56, I still have the muscle. Doctors are handing out HRTs like they're freaking Tic Tacs. Oh, you can't build muscle? Oh, woman, you have, you've got low sex drive? Oh, well, we'll just give you these synthetic hormones or, you know, creams made out of yams. Why can't you all build muscle without that? When you stop using your body, you lose it. A lot of you guys are having desk jobs. Okay, and if, if you work at a restaurant, you're running around, that's not going to help you build them loop for receptor sites. This is, right? Using the muscle, this is. So when I do this challenge, I'm going to go more into it. People are like, you talk about oxalates. Yes, I'm going to talk about oxalates. I'm telling you, I got my flow chart right here. I'm going to work on it later today. I'm getting close. I think I'm going to announce the date soon for signups. Not yet, but soon. Okay. It's just really want you guys to understand the importance that if you're not working out and you're doing these diets, you're not going to like help your body in any way to be stagnant, not upper trunk circulation. You're not going to deal with the cells, with the, the cellular respiration. You're not going to deal with uptake of glucose, cellular he healing, hormone production, having an anabolic effect. You're not going to be able to lose weight because these muscle cells are so friggin' I'm sorry. I have to show this horse. You guys gotta see this horse. I know I'm digressing even in my my recorded. Dude, what do you want? Thunder. Y'all, it's a beautiful day. Go be horses. We're like, are you married? I'm like, yeah, that's my husband right there. <laughs> okay, my beautiful people. Uh, let me show you a video. Kind of, it, it's very technical, but it's got visuals on the glute four receptors. They're inside the muscle cell. They pop to the surface of the cell, and they're amazing. Please work out. Please lift. It's so important. Here we go. Blood glucose levels rise after a carbohydrate-rich meal. Insulin, a hormone secreted by pancreatic beta cells, lowers blood glucose levels by allowing glucose to enter cells. When insulin binds to its receptor, a phosphorylation cascade begins that moves vesicles housing glucose transporter proteins, specifically GLUT4 proteins, from the cellular storage compartment to the cell surface. Glucose can then enter the cell and begin glycolysis or glycogen synthesis. The mechanisms behind insulin resistance are not well understood. Defective insulin receptors, insulin signaling, or glucose transporters may be the cause. As a result, 
basically also if you have damaged receptors, right? Because GLUT4 is a protein and it's coming out and it's signaling the receptor site, receptor sites and the receptor to allow glucose within the cell to be used as energy. So if you guys are experiencing diabetes, your body's not, not allowing the signaling between insulin, right? Your pancreas and the actual receptor to allow glucose in. Like that's why you guys got to be careful for stress and high blood sugar, carbs and sugars and, and, and poor sleep. That's when your body resists to uptake glucose in the cell, even if you're working out. Very little glucose can enter the cell and hyperglycemia ensues. This is known as type two diabetes. Exercise can lower blood glucose levels via two distinct mechanisms, the contraction mediated pathway and the insulin stimulated pathway. Greater intensity exercise yields greater glucose uptake by skeletal muscle cells, and long-term exercise training increases insulin sensitivity. So basically they're saying like, if you're working out insulin sensitivity, because now your body doesn't need to release bolus amounts of insulin to, to uptake and take, take glucose and transport it to be used, right? You don't need to store it. You can use it as energy in the muscles. Also, so you have functioning pancreas, which is very important, which is why you can't not, you cannot be dehydrated and have liver problems on doing a keto or carnivore diet, but also the, 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 so you've got the ability for insulin to work properly. So that's step one. And step two is that the cell has to let it in. And step three is that you've got to have enough glut for receptor development or receptor sites to allow the glucose from outside of the cell to inside of the cell to be used as energy. Resistance training. If you take, if you get anything from this takeaway workout, right? Get sleep and do resistance training because static training is not going to help you develop these glut for receptor sites like resistance training and body weight training that means like bike riding and running um those are more cardiovascular but resistance that is how you uptake glucose right well taking care of your adrenals and the cortisol pathway you don't want to go down the cortisol pathway because you're doing all this crazy hit training <laughs> right spiking cortisol and if you guys are ba bathed and lathered in cortisol, none of this stuff's going to work properly if your cortisol is constantly being secreted. Not the uptake of glucose, not the glucose receptor development, not the pancreas with the pancreatic like happiness, um, not with insulin sensitivity where your body only has to release a little bit of insulin to do a big job of taking glucose or transporting protein in the cells so they would grow. You should not need tons and tons and tons of insulin because if these bodybuilders were doing 400 grams of carbohydrate, you know, like, or somebody like, let's say, uh, who is the swimmer, Olympic swimmer, I forgot his name. Darn it, just went out of my head. There was Olympic Olympic swimmer that could go and he could eat 10,000 calories from carbs and he wouldn't get fat. So his body was constantly converting that glucose that was turned into triglycerides, fat in the cell, and then re-released -re again as glucose as energy. The problem is he could clear out the glucose, but he could not clear out the insulin. And that is why the video is saying you need to be insulin sensitive, because if you're just vomiting all this insulin out, but you can still clear out the glucose, I mean, you can use it, utilize the glucose, the insulin stacks up in the bloodstream, and then it damages cells and all that for not you're not fat but you're still damaged you're still oxidizing you're still aging and having health issues even though you're not fat right because some people can clear out the glucose or use the glucose but they can't clear out the insulin it's a whole thing insulin pancreas liver's got to work we for you know all the bile ducts all the plumbing that's connected to the pancreas must work properly it's a whole thing. But if you guys are wondering how to uh, regulate your blood sugar on a keto or carnivore diet and not get fat and get shredded, it is by working out and resistance training and taking care of your liver, taking care of insulin production, 
don't eat too much protein because that can reconvert back into glucose. And it's like eating a candy bar. And many people who are metabolically broken, or you've got too much insulin, you're insulin resistant, you check your insulin levels, you check your, check your A1C, but you're still not fat. A lot of people get confused. So that doesn't mean that you're still not being damaged. If you want to get shredded, you got to sleep well. You got a resistance train. Yoga is great. It's great for core. It's great for breathing. It's great for taking the cortisol down, but it's not good for glute four receptor development to uptake glucose. Just not. Static doesn't do it. And doing all this biking is is cortisol driven. And if you guys have thyroid issues and adrenal issues, that's not how you get shredded, right? It's not by taking the Ozemp medication. It's not by dieting. It's by eating foods at the right timing considered uh, the uh, circadian rhythm, no when to work out, can't work out at night. That's cortisol going down the cortisol pathway. And so the ways to get shredded are to go to bed and have a day job. You don't have a third shift night job. That's the worst for your health. Talk about die early. Um, to work out consistently, even if it's 10 minutes a day, if you have adrenal fatigue or thyroid issues, it's to regulate your blood sugar by eating every three hours. All this stuff I always say. I hope this helps. Energy at 55 going to on 56. I need to take my butt to the gym so I can get back home, ride my horse, my husband out there. That sounds bad. Um, take my horse on a on a horse ride, <laughs> who happens to be my husband. And um, yeah, life is good. Get ready for the challenge. It's still coming. If you need a consultation, if you're having issues, you can go to stephanieperson.com and book a consultation. Otherwise, you can join my month-to-month -month subscription course. It is on Facebook, $15 a month, but I go extensively into this information. Plus, I have handouts, sheets you can download for this lovely journey into our health as we get older. I think on YouTube, I think I might do an anti-aging series of how to stay young and how not to oxidize as you get older because a lot of these people in my age group in their 50s and 40s and even late 30s and of course and older are starting to use plastic surgery and all of this stuff to try to stay young instead of working on the inside out they're trying to work on the outside only and that ain't gonna do shite that'll just make you look like an alien so i want to do a video video series on that really explaining to you guys how to stay young as you get older. We're all going to age, right? But you don't. We don't have to collapse like people are doing today. There are centur centurions in the, the Okinawans. There are the Okinawans who are in Japan who are centurions and other old ancient cultures who were able to live quite a long time if they didn't die from some type of bacterial disease um, or hunger or starvation. Live very very long long lives because they didn't have all the toxic bucket buildup load that we do today with all the chemicals and the lead and our spices and and the forever chemicals and the uh, poor water quality and the packaged food that you guys eat and the poor meat quality i mean i could go on and on and on and that is the reason why i won't buy my food anymore from the supermarket i'm not going to going to do it anymore because um I just want the freshest food. I buy my produce from the Amish, right? I'm going to plant an avocado tree. Yes, I found someone who's going to help me plant a winter resistant. It's it's a little bit of a hybrid avocado, but it's an avocado tree, and I'm going to plant it in my garden. I got to put you know stuff around it so like raccoons and stuff don't get to the avocados. Um. It's an avocado. I'm going to do a whole video on this whole venture of getting an avocado tree where it'll produce smaller avocados, a little bit smaller than Haas avocados. It's winter resistant, so it'll survive the winters here in Tennessee because it's not that cold. I'm in a, I think I'm in zone six or seven. And um, uh, yeah, it's just really cool to be able to get grass fed meat from, you know, people down the road who've got beef, cattle, to get, you know, half a pig from pastor pork, to get, um, uh, 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 to get my avocados from my own tree, which then I can do the canning, which then I can 
uh, put them in the freezer. Like it's really good to put them. They just get a little mushy, but you can put avocados. If you don't want chemicals, you can get like organic avocados or even non-organic avocados and wash them out, wash them with, I'm going to do a video on this, wash them with, uh, uh, baking soda and get the pesticide off of it and then shove them in a freezer through the winter. Like if inflation goes through the roof and, uh, or you can can them and then just make a guacamole out of it. Cause they get really soft if you can them, but they last forever. They last for a long time. There are ways that we can take care of ourselves without aging. My people, we can get shredded. We can get happy. We can get healthy. We can have energy and we can eat good food, but our vegetables need to look busted and not perfect. And our meats should be from healthy animals that aren't, haven't gotten any cookie boxes. And I'm out. And only people, the only people who follow me know what a cookie box is. And I'm out. Peace. Energy. My Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. My Facebook fan page is Stephanie, the business person. And sign up for my course, online course, or sign up for a consultation at stephanieperson.com. And I'm out. Peace, guys. Till next time.